Ever think that if you look at a question long enough, it'll get easier to answer? Or if you think about a problem hard enough, it'll get easier to solve? Yeah, me too. I guess I should start out by introducing myself. Maybe that'd be a good way to start off this story. Um, hi, my name's Ginny. I'm a senior in high school, and it's that time of year again, the most wonderful time of the year, college application. This year's prompt was that I had to describe a life event that changed me, and I had to do it in a thousand words. My Aunt Peg died last May, at least that's when we found out about it. She left the country two years before, and we didn't really know where she was, but then we got a call from a man in England telling us she had died of brain cancer. A few weeks after, I got a package in the mail that had 13 little blue envelopes in it. These envelopes contained a set of instructions that my aunt had sent me before she died. And the instructions were telling me to do some pretty crazy things. They enclosed money and the very specific directions that I had to follow. I guess I didn't have to. Now looking back on it, I probably could have just thrown it away or burned it, but it just really didn't feel right. So I packed my bags and I headed off to Europe to, I guess, live out my aunt's legacy. This story isn't really about my adventure, though. It's more about what happened afterwards. And I managed to lose the last envelope. It was actually stolen from me, so don't think that I just dropped it and lost it. But I think that was really hard about losing it is... I thought that my adventure was over. I thought, you know, that was the end of the story and I'd close the book, but I realized that was just the end of the chapter and I had so many more pages to turn. Some of my instructions were I had to go to Europe and do some pretty crazy things. I had to give a thousand dollars to a starving artist and collect artwork from all over Europe. And I think it was one of the coolest things I've ever done because I feel like it shaped me. It is something I'll never ever forget and the people I met are so truly special. So now I'm sitting here at my computer again with nothing to write about. I know I feel like I should be the last person in the world without a prompt, but I think a lot of the times when there are memories that you don't really want to relive, your brain shuts them out and won't let you relive them. I feel like I should have so many things to write about. I went to Europe, I traveled, I did all these wonderful things, but I guess that's just me. So right now I'm sitting here praying for a miracle, hoping that maybe a thought will come to mind, that maybe something will happen. I guess miracles come to those who ask. <laughs> because at that moment, Probably the craziest thing, the craziest part of my story happened. I know, it gets weirder. <laughs> I think Aunt Peg kind of answered my prayers here. Because I don't think that this is something that happens every day. But I guess my story isn't something that happens every day. I received an email from a guy named Oliver Thomas. And I automatically identified by his email that he was from the UK. Woohoo! Another European. This is what his letter said. Hi, Ginny. You don't know me, and likewise, I don't know you, so I want to keep this short and sweet. I'm not positive you're the right Ginny, so I can't reveal too much. All I want to say is I believe I have some very valuable information. I have something you need. I found an envelope addressed to you in a backpack I bought in Greece. They are the most unique treasure I've ever discovered at a yard sale. I must say, your aunt seemed truly wild. If you want to find out the last instructions, you can reach me at this address. 670 Erickson Lane, London. For a moment, I did nothing. I didn't move. I didn't speak. I just waited for the information to sink in. This gave me the opportunity to see the last letter. My task would be undone. This was the universe more or less demanding that I return to England at once and finish what I started. I guess this is what some people call fate. <laughs> the old me had never traveled and knew no one in England. Old me would think, plan to be cautious, but I guess I'm not the old me. So, in that moment, I stood up and I started to pack.